uh, all protocols observed. It's, it's a distinct honor for me to be here with you today um, representing the Economic Commission for Africa based in uh, Addis Ababa. And specifically, it's urbanization section, which uh, I lead uh, at the commission. I'd especially like to thank the organizers as well as the host city for the warm welcome so far and the facilitation of our participation. I also wish to commend Edgar uh, for the excellent uh, address on the um, Cities Alliance Think Tank and the new narrative that the Think Tank is um, promoting. I think from the outset it's important uh, to be guided by the priorities for housing and sustainable urban development that have been defined at the highest level of leadership. And this was uh, referenced in the morning uh, by uh, Jean-Pierre Longbassi. And um, Edgar's presentation also was starting off with uh, Agenda 2063. But in addition to that, in July 2016 of this year, uh, the AU adopted a common African position on housing and sustainable urban development in the context of Habitat 3, building on the priorities of 2063. And this is a historic milestone. And I think our discussions here and um, the outcomes of the strategy meeting need to complement the common African position and build on the pillars that it uh, very clearly defines. And if urbanization is to receive the prioritization and the traction that it, re it requires in the region, it's very important to continue to link it to national and regional uh, development priorities. And so in this regard, I, I truly applaud and welcome the clear links made between urbanization, growth, and structural transformation in the new narrative that um, uh, the Cities Alliance has been um, sharing with us thus far. As Edgar so eloquently put, despite Africa's recent economic progress, it has neither been inclusive nor sustainable. And the underlying problem is Africa's growth model, which is highly dependent on low productivity sectors which are not able to create the jobs that are needed and are highly vulnerable to exogenous shocks. For example, we do know that 80% of total African exports are still linked to commodities mainly in the extractive industries. The amount of value addition from the commodities is estimated to just be 10%. And shockingly, the formal employment generated by mining, for example, is only 1% of the employment created in the continent. So this really points to the structural challenges that African economies are dealing with. And so to translate economic growth and shared prosperity and well-being for citizens, Africans, African countries urgently need to shift economic activities from less productive to more productive sectors. And this is where industrialization comes into the picture as a top priority for the region. And I'm very pleased to have heard um, um, Edgar elaborating this very clearly. But the pursuit of industrialization is happening in a rapidly urbanizing context. And we do know that from theory and experience, urbanization and industrialization have developed in parallel. Yet, in Africa, this is not the case. We're rapidly urbanizing without industrialization or without a green revolution. The correlation of urbanization and manufacturing value added as a percentage of GDP is extremely low. And so it becomes very urgent to transform Africa's cities into nodes of productivity and growth that enhance value addition, forward and backward linkages to the rest of the economy, especially with respect to agriculture, minerals, and natural resources. And the distinguished panelists from Liberia has also very eloquently elaborated these linkages. And I'd like to point to two issues. Employment is indicated as one of the principles and goals of sustainable urbanism in the CAT narrative, but I do not think it's fully addressed in the subsequent articulation. Where will the necessary jobs for Africa's growing urban population come from? In addition, we've been talking about financing and revenue generation at the local level. How is it that local authorities will be able to substantially increase their revenues and financial basis in order to invest in services and infrastructure? Again, I think this is where the industrialization comes in, offering opportunities. Let me just point to a few issues related to industrialization. First, it's important to plan and manage cities and human settlements so that they enable and do not hinder industrialization. Are we planning our cities with, with um, 
the intention of facilitating, facilitating industrialization? Are cities really providing the skilled pool laborers, markets, inputs and knowledge? Are they able to facilitate low barriers to entry such as access to land, finance and business support services to facilitate industrialization? Are they expanding R&D and ICT and technology to facilitate industrialization? And vice versa, we also need deliberate policies to ensure that industry takes advantage of the opportunities that are arising from urban growth and urban consumption. Let's take the example of housing. To what extent do we see housing as a driver of backward and forward linkages for industry, for economic diversification, or do we really see it only as a social good? Thirdly, related to these issues, we do need a cross-sectoral approach which links urbanization to sector policies, to investment policies, this is not necessarily the case at present. And fourthly, it becomes very important to mainstream urbanization into national development planning. We do need national urban policies, but we also need to mainstream urbanization as a strategic growth and development factor at the highest level, which is our national development planning. And this is what will allow us to develop a well-connected and balanced national system or hierarchy of cities. It will also allow us to develop urban growth poles that optimize locational advantages and endowments. And importantly, as also mentioned earlier, rural-urban linkages. We will still have a billion people in rural areas by 2050. So for Africa, this remains a very important priority. The final point I'd like to make actually is on data and statistics, which was also um, referred to by Edgar at the end. I think this is a very, very critical area that requires attention. So far, we do know that urban data and statistics has largely been demographic. We are in the blind when it comes to economic data at the local level, to the, t to the um, dynamic aspects of um, urbanization. We focus mostly on the static aspects and the spatial dimensions of national development planning. So at ECA, we've been focusing on a number of issues, and especially industrialization, as Edgar said. And I'm also very pleased to let you know that the next economic report on Africa will focus on industrialization and urbanization. And we're undertaking 11 country case studies in, um, in Africa, which will provide a, some insights into the how and the what of optimizing urbanization and industrialization linkages in Africa. So we very much look forward to engagement and, and uh, collaboration in this regard with Cities Alliance and all partners here present. Thank you.